Okay, Itamex Kanatani, good morning. It is Sunday, August 20th, 2017. Going into the lunar cycle, Pakipis Tsotsit HB when the choke cherries ripen. And we're getting ready to have our solar eclipse tomorrow <laughs> and the new moon, of course. I'm out here at Spopikimi, aka Elizabeth Hall Wetlands in Lethbridge, Alberta. And I'm out here every Sunday morning just doing a survey, a weekly survey of what's changing, what's going on phenologically, ecologically. I like to watch the, the progression throughout the year. And I pay attention to what everybody's doing, the plants and the animals and such. So today has been an interesting day. Um, there's things going out here, on out here that weren't here last year. There's several different several different um, sandpipers that are out here, solitary sandpipers and spotted sandpipers that we didn't see last week. There's a female wood duck, I believe, kind of hidden in the reeds over here across the way. She's pretty shy when I'm, when I'm out here. She makes her way to the reeds and climbs back up in there and doesn't want to really be seen. I've been paying attention today to what's still flowering, hey? kind of taking an inventory, what plants are still flowering. Um, a lot of what I would expect to be, right? So I have skeleton weed is in flower. Um, there's still a few blooms on clematis here and there. There's still, of course, gum weed. Um, the tufted white prairie aster is going to be our last bloom of the season. There's some um, hairy golden asters that are in bloom. There are, of course, there's still like Canada thistle that you can find a bloom here and there. Uh, bull thistle, you can find a bl bloom here and there. There's wavy leaf thistle. <laughs> Lots of thistles. Um, there's a few like... Um, what do they call them? Not shooting stars, but uh, for some reason the uh, the name is escaping me. Um, dang. <laughs> no matter. But um, and there's still a few uh, prairie cone flowers around that have have some blooms going on with them, some sunflowers, rhombic leaf sunflowers, and prairie sunflowers, but in general the, the number of flowering plants out here is quickly diminishing as we move more toward winter. We still have two lunar cycles of summer, two full lunar cycles to go through uh, by the Blackfoot calendar, but it's just going to be dry and uh, not a whole lot happening. There's still quite a few birds out here, but uh, I've noticed that the blackbirds are gone. A couple of weeks ago, the, the juvenile blackbirds were still begging out here, but now I don't hear them. Um, the red wings have been gone for a little while. And what else is going on? Lots of fledglings, um, cowbird fledglings, or not cowbird, um, catbird fledglings, uh, eastern um, kingbird fledglings. Yeah, I was just mentioning the other week how I never see any golden finch fledglings out here. Lo and behold, this morning, here they are. And the, the best today was, <laughs> was the... Uh, the uh, cedar waxwing fledglings, they're, they're actually very curious and I was putting some currents, some golden currents on my head and they would fly over and, and pick them off. Yeah, I got it, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Um, they're, 
they were that approachable. What else have I been seeing out here today? Um, the the choke cherry, of course, are, are ready to be harvested. There's a lot of uh, funnel web spiders. I think I took just a little shot of one of the funnel web spiders uh, back there. But not seeing as many insects out today. I am noticing that there's more, what would you call them, funnel web spiders. Hey, like here's one right here. <laughs> My thinking with the funnel web spiders, I see them every year this time, this time of the summer. And uh, I think that they time, you know, um, they're, 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 their um, increase in activity is timed with the the grigs and the grasshoppers and such, right? So the gra grasshoppers are kind of at their peak. This is the perfect opportunity for uh, for the young hawks to come out of the nest and feed on them as they have been doing for the last few weeks. And um, this is the time for the funnel web spiders to lay out those hammocks of webbing close to the ground that's going to catch them up. Um, that's what the timing seems to involve to me. What else is happening? I don't know. It's uh, There's always like something going on out here. The heron's still out here. I caught him on, on film catching a couple of fish. Um, the belted kingfishers are still around, uh, but the swallows are gone. They've been gone for a bit. Um, there just really didn't seem to be an abundance of insects today as compared to the last couple of visits. Like I'm, I'm still seeing many of the insects that I've photographed the last couple of weeks, but not in the numbers that I was seeing them the last couple of weeks. So yeah, just out and took a little walk around and I'll share some of the, the footage and photographs and that kind of thing. Very cool. I was just walking through the forest here and I came across a treasure. This is a oriole nest and when they're made, when they're constructed, the orioles make them way, way up at the top of the forest canopy. And so it's unusual to get a nice close-up look at one of these unless you happen to find one that has fallen down uh, at some point right like this one so you can see um, it's a it's kind of a, a, a bag a fiber bag that hangs up and it's filled with this downy cotton from the cottonwoods right so it's nice and soft internal environment there to raise um, babies in and it's strong you know even though this one's fallen down these net bags like this will a lot of times like I'll count them in the winter just to kind of get an idea of how many Orioles were around in the previous summer how many Oriole couples made nests I'll go around once the leaves are off I'll go looking for them um, but they stick around you know typically they'll be up in a tree for a couple of years before they fall down. And so um, we're kind of lucky. I think this one is a fresh one from this year. And 
something about its construction or maybe it just was on a branch that just didn't make it in the wind the other day or something but here it is and um, very cool to be able to to look at one up close like this I've found a couple over the years here um, this one what's really interesting to me is it has this this black fiber in here that I don't recall seeing before I'm gonna have to check I've got another Oriole nest at home that I found a couple of years back, but um, I don't recall seeing this kind of black fiber in there. And I'm not sure if that's art something artificial or something from nature, if it's a nature fact or an artifact. It kind of feels like almost like a fishing string, like it's nylon or something. It very well could be. I don't recognize it as a product um, that I've seen, but I don't know. I'm going to have to kind of keep a keep an eye out for it. This one has a lot of it mixed in with it, so and that that may be an artificial product. It may be the reason why this this whole thing has fallen apart and fallen down so quickly. Who knows? But yeah, nice little pocket for raising the young. And I'm probably going to take this home and analyze it a bit more and show um, some of my students and stuff. Keep it around as a, as a sample because you just don't come across them too, too often. Nice little treasure.